Our first guest is uh, Bronx's newest state senator. He has many goals to help the Bronx community, including in the areas of jobs and education. He's going to talk about his upcoming plans for the borough. Uh, please welcome State Senator Jamal Bailey. Nice to have you with us on the show. Good morning, Gary. It's strange to see you before 9 o'clock. <laughs> 9 p.m., I should it's say. It's strange for me to be here before 9 o'clock. Um, um, or 10 o'clock, whatever time we are. Yeah, as a moment of personal privilege, I just want to say happy birthday to my wife, Giamara. Tom Today's the day? Tomorrow's, Tomorrow's her birthday, day. but, you know, happy wife, happy life. So make sure I mention that very first. And I'm invited to the party. I Absolutely. Assume. All right. <laughs> um, so before we even get into any um, uh, legislative issues or anything like that, how's it going? How does it feel for you to be a state senator? It's a dream. When you get to represent the community that you've grown up in for your entire life, that you've lived in, you've worked in, and you've done everything else, and it's... It really is a dream, and I go to Albany, and I, you know, go up there with a smile every day, and I'm just so happy to represent the needs of my constituents. So the the uh, uh, politics in Albany haven't wiped that smile off your face well, just yet. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I am um, optimistic. I remain optimistic about again what my job is, and my job is to make sure that I'm representing the needs and concerns and the issues that relate to the 36th senatorial district. I've been sent up there to do a job, and I'm doing my, doing my best to make sure that job is being done. Uh, if you were to uh, take a step back now, the last time sure. we met was in this room. Uh, I, we did a, a debate. I moderated a debate that uh, you were in uh, when you were running for office. Uh, since you got elected, what were constituents telling you to say, you know what, you're now my representative, as you have clearly acknowledged and is certainly true. What are they saying we want you to do for us? As opposed to all the plans that you might have had, what do you hear from constituents? Well, a lot of the issues that I'm hearing about now, unfortunately, are things that I really can't solve, like Trump, right? You know, we, you know, in, in the state of New York, we obviously represent the state and not the, I'm not representing, not representing at the state level, not the federal level. So there's a, a little bit that I can do. You against. can't control that. But what we can do is make sure that we resist and, and this is making sure that you know you don't just protest one day or protest two days that you're consistent with your resistance mm -hmm. and that's one of the issues that keeps coming up you know the from message constituents yes the messages that i get from my um in, in my email and back box are concerning donald trump and they're also concerning raising the age of criminal responsibility really hot button issue in albany right now new york state is one of two states in the nation new york and north carolina that prosecute 16 to 17 year olds as adults and that is something that I believe that we need to change. It's more than just a hashtag, it's more than just a slogan. It's affecting real lives on, a, on an everyday basis and we need to make sure that we raise the age of criminal responsibility in the state of New York. What are the prospects for that, uh, at least on, on the Senate side of the, of the uh, legislature? Uh, I mean, is that a big fight uh, for you right now? Or do you feel like there is some give and take and we're going to get somewhere. Well, I feel like we're going to get somewhere. I mean, there might be some, there are certain different approaches um, that different groups within the conference, excuse me, within the, um, the legislature are taking. The assembly has already passed, raised the age, and I do commend the state, New York State Assembly for doing that. We in the Senate need to follow suit. Uh, I guess it, it needs to be asked, especially I'm very curious for a new member. Uh, the, the whole idea of the IDC has um, kind of changed the way we have, or you all, have done business in, in the state Senate. Um, do you feel somewhat um, compelled to say, well, maybe I ought to look at whether I ought to join that? Um, and, and what is your attitude? Is that an effective body to help get uh, raise the age or some of the other things passed? Well, or is, do you find it something that's in the way? Well, do I find compelled? No, I, I do not. I'm not compelled to join the IDC. Um, I am a, am a Senate Democrat, and I'm happy to be in that Senate Democratic Conference. I believe that we have progressive ideas and policy agenda that we can push forward to make the state of New York and the 36th Senatorial District um, an even better place to live than it currently is. Um, we're all Democrats, and, and, I'm, and I, I'm hopeful that at some point in the future that we coalesce and we come together and have a Democratic governing majority in the New York State Senate where we can push even more progressive ideas, even more progressive um, mantras forward in the state of New York. Mm -hmm. What has been the biggest learning curve for you? I realize it's, so now we're, what, you know, third week of February, so seven weeks since you've actually been in office. But is there anything there that surprises you and you say, Gee whiz, I didn't know, I mean, you had plenty sure. of experience prior, but I didn't know this was going to happen, and now I've got to really work on something. Well, two things. What The hardest thing for me is the, is the, uh, the travel, being away from my family and my two young daughters. That's easily the hardest thing that I factored in, but I didn't factor in as how... You didn't how realize much, how it was going to be. I didn't realize that it would affect 
that much. But, you know, my wife is amazing and my daughters are amazing and we're doing everything that we can to make sure that, you know, she helps me live my dream every day. So I'm, I'm happy to be supportive. But I, I want to just interject about sure. that because um, uh, your constituents and many others make assumptions. Well, he's now in Albany and that's it. he's got the big job. He's, of course, well known now, more well known than you are. But there really is a personal toll. In fact, I had a conversation in this room on Bronx Talk with um, uh, Carl Hasty, who you, of course, know very well, and he was talking about compensation for legislators that their personal lives get so disrupted, but people don't realize that maybe they ought to be compensated for that. And and you're exp first thing off the bat, that's what you expressed. Well, I mean, it's, for me, it's not so much about compensation. It's, no, it's, I, I realize that. I, I added that in. I'm sorry. No, I just want to be, I want to be clear. I just want to, you know, it's important for me to to make sure that you know my family is, is vitally important to me. So of course. balancing that work-life balance, just like anybody with any other job. Sure. And again, at the end of the day, my job is no better than anybody else in the community. It's just different. I yeah. just have different jobs. My, my job description is a little different than somebody else. And, and you're, you're saying that humanizes, frankly, you and, and the whole profession. So go ahead, I, I interrupted no, you. No, it's, it's, it's quite all right. I mean, I have a great staff, um, and, and they really help to censor me, whether it's up in Albany or downstate. Um, uh, the big, one of the biggest learning curves is, I guess, making sure that as a freshman, I haven't seen all of these bills on the Senate side. So I, I pour through the legislation. I make sure that um, I know what I'm voting on, mm -hmm. that everything that I vote on is something that is, is vitally important. You know, I know that I understand the importance of what it is that I'm voting on. And reading through these bills can sometimes take a, a long time, but I read through every one, everything that's on my committee, um, my, the, my committee meeting list, everything that's on the active list to vote on, I make sure I read, read, read up on it because I take my job very seriously. Is there a bill that you have read that frankly doesn't get a lot of publicity because obviously we hear about all ra raise the age or any of these other big issues uh, that maybe people would be interested to know about that's something you've read and you said, hmm, that's interesting, you know, that kind of thing? There are quite a few bills actually that, that don't, I guess, see the, the light of day. Um, I guess I, to take a point of another personal privilege, that I, I have a bill. Oh, do, do you know, tell. I think people would want to know what it is. That I've, that, that I've interest, and it's passed the assembly. Now. Hopefully we can pass it, get the, pass the Senate. It's, it's concerning the uh, sealing records, concerning uh, misdemeanor plain view marijuana arrests. And these misdemeanor arrests can potentially derail somebody's life. You know, you're talking about, you know, marijuana, while I'm not yeah. a person who's ever partaken in that. Mm -hmm. but just ch because somebody chooses to do so sh should not mean that they that their life and their career could be derailed simply because of a misdemeanor arrest. Sure, and in this day and age when people are literally being deported for Correct. potentially if they're undocumented, it can become a serious thing. Well, um, thank you so much, uh, Jamal Bailey, for being with us. Good luck in your time in the state Senate. I'm sure we're going to have you back on, Absolutely. on Bronx Talk, uh, but we really appreciate you coming in here, sharing a couple of moments with the people. Thank you. I just want to say to Bronx that you guys are certainly not fake news. Thank you for always representing <laughs> the needs and the, the needs and concerns of the Bronx. Hey, in the discussion we just listen, had, right? You guys, you guys always, you, you guys always step up for us. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Jamal Bailey. Uh, folks, uh, we're going to uh, take a break. We'll be back uh, with the latest news in politics, specifically national politics.